Mother all by myself. Suppose he doesn't approve of me. I'm sure you'll love you, Augustus. Excuse, sir. Just as I do. But I'll be all alone. Oh, my brave, my wonderful boy. In you get now. is really amazing, Jeeves. Indeed, sir. Uh, don't sound so suky, Jeeves. I thought you'd be pleased. It means you won't have to lug that great bag of clubs around anymore. This little chap is the whole works. I should not wish to be seen carrying an illegal club around Wentworth, sir. There's nothing in the rules of golf says one can't have an adjustable iron. You see, I just press this button here. Click, it's a niblick. Click, click, it's a mashy niblick. Click, 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 it's a mid-mashy. Click, 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 click. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Most ingenious. All the way up to click. Rule number 14.3, sir, states that no player shall use any artificial device or unusual equipment. The Rules Committee of the Royal and Ancient are... The Rules Committee of the Royal and Ancient are yesterday's men, Jeeves. They simply have to face up to the modern world. If you say so, sir. Mr. Worcester's residence. Good afternoon, Mrs. Gregson. Uh, no, I regret to say that Mr. Worcester is not at home, Mrs. Gregson. Certainly, Mrs. Gregson. Yes, Mrs. Gregson. That was Mrs. Gregson, sir. She desires us both to visit her immediately. And I say yes, Bertie. Oh, but dash it, Aunt Agatha. Please. Can't you confine that sort of language to the tap room where it belongs? Not Agatha, I, I don't even know this Gertrude Winkworth. Her mother, Dame Daphne, is one of my oldest and dearest friends. There is good blood there, Bertie. An injection of it might fortify the jejune concoction, which seems to run through the veins of the Worcesters these days. Well, you're sure not suggesting that I just turn up on the doorstep of this Deverell Hall place and ask to marry their Gertie? Her mother confided to me that Gertrude was being pursued by some quite unsuitable sort of actor of all things. I said to her, she is just the girl for Bertie. That's another thing. If this Gertrude Winkworth and I should by some remote chance hit it off, and be known by all and sundry as Bertie and Gertie, like some dashed musical act. Don't be such a poltroon, Bertie. Get him down to Deverell Hall, Jeeves. Very good, Mrs. Gregson. <laughs> Bertie, 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 I've forgotten the address. Gussie, whose address? I can't remember. Dean something something. <sighs> can't you telephone Madeline to find out where her dreaded godmother lives? I don't know where Madeline is. Oh, at least I do. The Larch is Wimbledon Common. But I don't know the telephone number. Well, that's all right. We can look it up. What's the name of this friend of hers? Hilda or something. Oh. Pardon me, sir? Yes, Jeeves? If it is to Miss Bassett's godmother that Mr. Finknottle must present himself for approval, uh, then I think you'll find that it is Dame Daphne Winkworth. That's it? That's it? How the dickens did you know that, Jeeves? Uh, I heard Miss Bassett's father, Sir Watkin, mention that Miss Madeline's two godmothers are Dame Daphne and Mrs. Gregson's. Uh, he referred to them in a moment of grim jocularity as Scylla and Charybdis. And this is the same Dame Daphne Winkworth of Deverell Hall that we're under orders to see. Indeed, sir. Oh, there you are then, Gussie. We can put you up for the night and you can travel down with us tomorrow. Oh, no. Madeline would expect me to be there tonight. Oh, assert your independence, Gussie. 
Anyway, how will she know that you're not? We could uh, slide over to the drones for a snifter. All right. Why shouldn't I? I will. Why should I do exactly what Madeline tells me all the time? Spoken like a true fig novel, Gussie. I don't go around telling her what to do. True, true. Ah, uh, usual for me, please, George. What about you, Gussie? Orange juice, please. Come, Gussie, you're out on the long leash. You'll drink champagne and like it. Catch me! What? What ho, Bertie? I haven't seen you in an age, Catsmeat. Do you know Gussie Finn Noddle? Uh, Claude Potter Purbright. <laughs> so what are you up to, Catsmeat? Oh, I start rehearsing a new musical next week. Oh, nice part. The usual. Bound on Act One, clutching a tennis racket and shout, Hello, girls. Act Two, fall in love with the parlour maid. Act Three, find out she's really Lady Penelope incognito and live happily ever after. I think I've seen that one. Oh. What about you? Busy? Oh, Lord, yes. Yes, Gussie and I are going down to Devil Hall so. tomorrow. How do you know them? The Winkworths. Know them? Are you trying to be funny? I'm engaged to Gertrude. Gertrude? But as in Winkworth? Of course. Oh. What do you mean? Oh. She's wonderful, Bertie. Come on, Mac. Yeah, well, that's good, isn't it? No, it's not good. When we got engaged and broke the news to her mother, she let out a yell you could have heard in St. Neots. St. Neots being? About 20 miles as the crow flies. Oh, a goodish distance, then. And I haven't seen Gertrude since. I'm trying to pluck up the courage to go back down there again and persuade her to elope with me. Oh, what's her mother like? Dame Daphne. Light heavyweight. Touch of Wallace Beery about the jawline. Oh, dear. Gus is engaged to her goddaughter. I'm going to Deverell Hall to get her blessing. Oh, well, I wish you luck with the aunts. Aunts? Dame Daphne's got about 43 sisters living with her. And they let out yells, too. Oh, dear. There we go. I'll tell you what, Garcia, why don't you take cat's meat out to dinner? He doesn't eat all that much, and uh, he can enwise you and raise these aunts and so forth over the potage. <laughs> ah, jeez. A slight complication has arisen about the dratted Winkworth pill Aunt Agatha is hell-bent on pairing me off with. Indeed, sir. Huh? Yes, the actor that Dame Daphne is so keen to head off for the pass is cat's meat Potter Purbright. Cat's meat is absolutely balmy about her, apparently. The girl, that is. That would seem to put you into a somewhat ambiguous situation in regard to your friendship with Mr. Potter Purbright, sir. Ambiguous is right, Chief. Well, there's nothing for it, I suppose. I shall just have to throttle right back on the old charm. Don't want to turn the poor girl's head and leave cat's meat standing at the post. It would seem to be a danger, sir. Uh, will that be all, sir? Yes, Chiefs, that'll be all, yes. Thank you, sir. I hunt with the East Sussex, of course. But Roger said he felt a certain obligation to support the blasted mid-hands. The consequence was I never saw the little blight at all during the winter. My poor Hilda. Any old how, I issued an ultimatum, I'm afraid. Look here, Roger, I said. Either it's the mid-hands or it's me. Take your choice. Oh, Hilda, you're so courageous. Yes, well, I haven't seen hide nor hair of him since, and that was six weeks ago. Oh, it isn't fair, is it? I'm so lucky to have a man like Augustus. Strong, reliable. Whatever happened to that other blighter you used to be keen on, that Bertie Worcester? Ah, oh, poor Bertie. He's still wildly in love with me, of course, but I had to tell him that there could never be anything between us my heart belongs to Augustus, you see. Of course, if Augustus and I were ever to break up... Oh. <sighs> I told you, I'm singing. Come on in, come on in. I'm pretty handy with my fist, oh, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. Come on, Gussie. No, let me get at him. No, no, we'll go to the blue haddock. They'll let you sing there. Let me get at him. Oh, let me... By now, it was five in the morning and we were in Trafalgar Square. Gussie got the idea there might be newts in the fountain and started wading about. You can't get wading about in Trafalgar Square fountain with all your clothes on. Well, Gussie did. Well, he wasn't pinched. He was. A cop came along and gaffed him. He was given 14 days without the option of Bosher Street Police Court this morning. Do you know what, Jeeves? Uh, no, sir. Gussie Pink Nottles in stir. <laughs> Gussie Pink Nottles in stir? You see the ghastly position, Jeeves? What is going to happen when Gussie doesn't turn up at Deverell Hall? Madeline will make inquiries. You know what women are like for digging out the truth. And nothing but an idealistic young girl off a fellow more than the news that he's doing 14 days in Chokey. Very acute observations, Anne. There can be but one result. 
Gussie will get the bum's rush and the bowed figure you will see shambling down the aisle at Madeline Bassett's side while the organ plays the voice that breathed her Eden will be Bertram Wilberforce Worcester. I don't see why. <sighs> Madeline Bassett labours under the delusion that I'm madly in love with her. Well, when a girl thinks you're in love with her and comes to you and says that she's returning her betrothed to store and is prepared to sign up with you instead, what can you do except marry her? One well, has to be civil. <clears throat> there is one possible solution, sir. <sighs> you see? There is one possible solution, sir, just like that. <sighs> For your information, Catsmeet, Jeeves takes a size 14 hat, eats tons of fish and moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. Speak, Jeeves. Well, sir, to obviate the inquiries which would inevitably be set on foot should Mr. Finknottle not present himself at Deverill Hall this evening, it would appear to me to be essential that a substitute purporting to be Mr. Finknottle should take his place. We're not suggesting that I check in at this plague pit as Gussie. Unless you can persuade one of your friends to do so, sir? <laughs> you can't go around London asking people to pretend to be Gussie Finknottle. Well, at least you can, I suppose, but what a hell of a life. Besides, there isn't even... Cat's meat. Uh, not on, old chap. They all know me at Deverell. Well, I can't do it. Apart from anything else, I can't even do a possible imitation of Gussie. Mm, you'll pardon me for pointing this out, sir, but the virtue of the plan is that there is no need for you to approximate the look or manner of Mr. Finknottle. Nobody at Deverell Hall has ever seen him. <laughs> yes, but dash it all, Jeeves. They must at least have heard about him. I mean, let's face it, if Gussie's brain were constructed of silk, he'd be hard put to it to find sufficient material to make a canary a pair of cami knickers. Five minutes' conversation with me and the old folks would penetrate the deception like a dose of salts. I'm sure that your cool head and undoubted thespian powers will see you through the day, sir. <sighs> jeez, jeez, what are we letting ourselves in for? I regret to say that I shall not be able to accompany you on this venture, sir. Not be it? Why on earth not, Jeeves? <clears throat> I'm sorry, sir. Uh, the Ganymede Club would not look kindly on a gentleman's gentleman sailing, as it were, under false colours. <laughs> Late for dinner? Well, dinner has already commenced, sir. We dine at 7.30 punctually at Deverill. Ah, so uh, straight in and join the fray, you think? Such were Dame Daphne's instructions, sir. Right, lead on, then. Mr. Fink Nottle has arrived, Dame Daphne. Oh, good. Oh, the... <laughs> Fink Nottle, sorry, Fink Nottle. Fink Nottle. Mr. Fink Nottle, you're very late. You'll have to forego the soup and the fish. Oh, consider them forward. Yes. Well, this was in here. Well, this is jolly. Allow me to introduce my sisters. Miss Emmeline Deverell, Miss Myrtle Deverell, Miss Harriet Deverell, and Miss Charlotte Deverell. All the little Deverells, eh? <laughs> well, I'm Gussie Fink Nottle, noted newt fancier. What did he say? He said he's a newt fancier. Is that why he's so late? And this is my daughter, Gertrude Winkworth. The nephew of a friend of mine is also meant to be here. I wonder if you know him, a Mr. Worcester. Bertie Worcester? Oh, yes. Well, I've not actually had the pleasure, but uh, I've heard of him. Well, that's how I know his name. Yes. Apparently, he's completely irresponsible. Agatha says she often wonders if the kindest thing wouldn't be to put in some kind of home. Well, if that isn't just... Yes, now, um, now, I wonder, has everyone heard the one about the, uh, the fan dance from the performing flea? Uh, no, actually, uh, here's a better one. Uh, uh, yes, there are these three deaf chaps on a train, and it stops at Wembley. What's he doing? Mr. Finknottle is telling an anecdote. Anyway, uh, there it is at Wembley, and one of the chaps says, is this Wembley? And the other one says, no, it's Thursday. What did he say? He said, no, it's Thursday. No, it's not, it's Friday. I know, because I changed my library book. It's a joke, Charlotte. Thank you. Um, so then the third one says, so am I. Let's get out and have a drink. It's a joke about drink, Charlotte. No, no, it's not about drink. It's about, um... 
Well, why did the first man bring up the days of the week? No, the first man is the one who says, is this Wimbledon? Yeah. No, yeah. Wimbledon. That was the second man. No. Let Mr. Finknottle finish his joke before we judge it. Well, that was it, actually. Is it about tennis, perhaps? I don't care for jokes about tennis. No, it's some jokes about tennis. No, I don't yes, care. care. No, it's no, it's no, 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 Good evening, Dan. What on earth are you doing here? <clears throat> I'm performing my customary office, Mr. Finknottle, in attending Mr. Worcester. But... Gussie? You're meant to be in court. <clears throat> Allow me to help you with that, Mr. Worcester. What? Who? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Worcester? You must be Mr. Worcester. Yes. I beg your pardon. No, 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 <laughs> no, not me. No, I'm, uh, I'm Fig Nottle, you know, the new man. Never mind, good morning. What on earth is going on? How did Gussie get out of stir? The magistrate decided on second thoughts to substitute a fine for the prison sentence, sir. I was unable to inform you since it happened while you were already on your way here. So Gussie is freed from Durant's vial and you scoop him up and bring him to Deverell Hall? Yes, sir. Why? It seemed the best possible course of action, sir. In the event of either of you failing to arrive, inquiries would have been instituted by either Mrs. Gregson or Miss Bassett, with disastrous results. Uh, to point out just one aspect of the matter, sir, Miss Bassett is expecting daily letters from Mr. Finknottle describing in some detail his life here. Yeah, well, I hadn't thought of that. So, I'm Gussie and Gussie's me. Yes, sir. Oh, well, ceaseless vigilance will be required if we're not to gum up the game with that crew downstairs. We shall be walking on eggshells. A very trenchant metaphor, sir. Well, hello, Gussie. Or rather, Bertie. Well, this is a pretty state of things. Oh, better than being in cake, though, eh? When you're in prison, at least you don't have people calling you Mr. Worcester. How do you suppose I feel knowing that everybody thinks you're me? Well, I assume you prefer it. Prefer it? Are you mad? Well, how do you think I feel? Do you realise that the little world of King's Devil is probably going to go to its grave believing that Bertram Worcester is an oversized gargoyle who looks like Lester de Pestre in an American comic strip? In case you are under any illusion, then let me inform you that those aunts were pulling their skirts aside as I passed when I said I was Bertie Worcester. And, as if that wasn't bad enough, you seem to have made my name mud too. Something about trains and Wimbledon. Oh, an unseemly anecdote. They said, what's going to happen if they tell Matlin? I go about telling unseemly anecdotes. I advise stout denial. In any case, it wasn't about Mr. Wooster? Mr. Finknottle? Ah, what ho, Dame Daphne? Gertrude is on the terrace, Mr. Wooster. Well? I thought perhaps you might want to talk to her. What about? Excuse us just a moment, will you? Gussie, I am meant to be down here wooing Gertrude Winkworth. Wooing? Wooing, courting, pressing one suit, dallying with. I'm not going to do that. Well, you're going to have to do it, Gussie, because you're meant to be me. You do your own dirty work. Suppose Madeline found that. Madeline won't find out. She's miles away in Wimbledon. Uh, yes, Bertie thinks that after all, you might actually just uh, toss her out on, onto the terrace and have a quick word with Gertrude, don't you, Bertie? No. I'm sure she'd be very pleased to see you. Well, I... Yes, almost as pleased as I shall be to see dear old Madeline again. Yes, I've got so much to tell her. Well, you could... Oh, very well. Oh, what, a, what a charming fellow that Bertie Worcester is. He could charm the skin off a rice pudding. He seems very confused. Confused? Bertie Worcester? Never, no. One of the keenest minds of his generation. Hello. Hello, Mr. Worcester. I'm Bertie Worcester. Lovely morning, isn't it, Mr. Worcester? What is? The morning, the weather. Oh. Do you 
like newts? Newts? I've got... Gussie think not has got lots of newts. I really envy him. It must be really fulfilling to have that many newts. Morning, Mr. Paddy. Morning, madam. There you are, then. She'd write. I say, Bertie, what a charming girl. What? Who? That Gertrude. Gertrude Winkworth. Is she? She wants me to sing tomorrow night. Sing? She'd heard from your Aunt Agatha what an expert you are on all this modern dance music. And if she thought I was you, she said I could entertain everyone after dinner tomorrow night. Well, can you sing, Gussie? Probably. What do you mean, probably? Well, I haven't tried yet, have I? I thought you could teach me a couple of those songs. Do you play the piano, Gassy? Yes. I'm better at the oboe. Really? Yeah, I think the piano is the more usual sort of thing. Uh, ah, now, this is a good one, yes. Uh, so, shall I just uh, play it through for you, give you the general idea, then you have a go? Oh, all right. Right. One, two, three, four. Some people make a fuss when the thing goes wrong. Some start to swear and cuss, others sing a song. I don't do either, that's all metal. When a thing goes wrong with me, this is what I do. I lift up my finger and I say, toot, toot, shush, shush, now, now, come, come. I don't need to linger when I say, toot, toot, shush, shush. Stop! Are you mad? Do you think I'm going to stand up in front of people and think, tweet, tweet? Ha, ha, hee, hee, hee. No, the second one's shush, shush. What does it all mean? Well, it's the absolute denier creed, you see. As creeds go, this is about as denier as you can get. It's absolute gibberish. Ah, well, if you want intellectual content... Uh, now, this is the one. Right, here we go. <clears throat> Like that, that's very good. Let me have a go. Gertrude will love this. Oh, she'd have to have a heart of stone. What do you mean, Gertrude will love this? Well, she's the one who wanted me to play. Madeline never wanted me to play. Well, Madeline doesn't think you're me. Don't you sometimes feel that Madeline's a bit, well, soppy, Bertie? Madeline, soppy? All that business about baby bunny rabbits and the stars being God's daisy chain. No. No, 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 Gussie. No, no, Madeline's beliefs are a bit out of the ordinary, perhaps, but, but sound. Gussie, extremely sound. No, I think it would be a grave mistake for you to think of her as soppy. Well, let's get on with it, shall we? Ah, jeez. Sorry to disturb you in your lair. Not at all, sir. Well, I don't like the way things are going, Jeeves. Mr. Fink Nottle appears to be besotted by this Gertrude female. I feared that this might be the case, sir. I suppose it's only to be expected. The sudden impact of a girl like Gertrude, plum spang in the middle of spring on a fat head like Gussie, weakened through constantly swilling orange juice, must be terrific. But what are we going to do, Jeeves? I've taken the liberty, sir, of arranging a three ball this afternoon between Miss Winkworth, Mr. Finknottle, and yourself. Golf, Jeeves? At a time like this? With Gussie? He's a terrible golfer. Well, I am to know that Gertrude takes her golf very seriously. She plays off six. Such is my understanding, sir. Well, she'll see his abysmal putting and his frankly laughable game off the tee, and she'll, she'll cast him aside like a split bathish. Jeeves, how could I ever doubt you? I could not say, sir. Mr. Potter Purbright? Me? 
Well, after that row with your mother... That was three weeks ago. You haven't telephoned me, you haven't written... Anyway, I'm here now, and I've decided I want you to elope with me. Oh, do you, just? Oh, good of you to let me know. Well, you can just jolly well go back to London and... Cat's meat? Shh! I'm in disguise. Pathetic, isn't it? What do you mean, that face fungus? Oh, you fool of parrot. I'm your man. What do you mean, you're my man? Your valet. It's the ideal way for me to come down here and see Gertrude incognito. My name's going to be Meadows. Are you mad? Would you... Mr. Pinsottle! Oh, my God. Uh, what o dim nefty? Don't I recognise you? Well, I hope so, yes. I was at dinner last night. No, you. Uh, no, no. Uh, I'm his man. Man? A lackey. Sir, valet. Your face seems very familiar. Yes, but it's, it's that sort of face, you know. You see them all over the shop. <laughs> Anyhow, you may go about your business. I want to speak to your master. What's this I hear, Mr. Finknottle? I beg your pardon? I've had a telegram from Madeline. Oh, yes? Madeline says she has not received a single letter from you since you arrived at the hall, and she is deeply distressed at your abominable neglect. And I'm not surprised. Oh, right, yes, well, um, tell you what, I'll, I'll dash off a line as soon as we get back from the golf. How about that? Please do, Mr. Finknottle. Right. about you not writing to Madeline. Madeline? Madeline, do you realize she started sending telegrams about it? For all our sakes, Gussie, write to her. I am not at all pleased with Madeline. It was she who made me come to this ghastly place. I only consented on the understanding that she'd come too. Then at the last moment, she coolly backed out on the flimsy plea that some school friend of hers needs her. She must be made to realize she can't do that sort of thing. So I'm not going to write to her. It's a sort of a system. Gussie! For the last time, will you or will you not immediately compose an eight-page letter of breathing love in every syllable and post it to Madeline? Not. Come on, Bertie. Right Righto. Out. I simply press this button here, click, it's a niblick, click, click, it's a mashy niblick, click, 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 it's a mid-mashy. No further club required. Say goodbye to heavy golf bag misery. With that new club of yours, Bertie? No, well, it takes a bit of getting used to. You can't expect just to pick up a club like this. Yeah, let me have a go. You can use my clubs for the rest of the round, if you like. Waiting for you. 
What does that blasted Finknottle think he's up to? Gussie Finknottle is a criminal lunatic. But he seems to be infatuated with Gertrude. Sorry to use such long words, Bertie. I mean, I come all the way down here to try to persuade Gertrude to elope with me, and I can't get near her for that blasted Fink Nottle. Worse than that, he says he isn't going to write to Madeline. You know how much importance girls of the Bassett type attach to the Daily Letter? And he won't write. Not a line. I've pleaded with him passionately, I may say, and he simply put his ears back and refused to cooperate. If Madeline doesn't receive a letter from Gussie swearing undying fealty, she's liable to come down here and beat one out of him. Jeeves, I'm sunk. Well, sir, if Mr. Finknottle will not write to Miss Bassett, perhaps you might write to her yourself. Well, she doesn't want to hear from me, Jeeves. She wants to hear from Gussie. If it were indicated to Miss Bassett that Mr. Finknottle had sprained his wrist and had to dictate a letter to you, sir? I say, what a wheeze. You were right about him, Bertie. Thank you, sir. If you were to say that Mr. Finknottle had given his wrist a nasty wrench while stopping a runaway horse and saving a little child from a hideous death, it might turn Mr. Finknottle's taciturnity to your advantage, sir. A golden-haired child is usually best in such circumstances. What a man, Bertie. What a brain. And all this is due to fish, you say. Never mind about Jesus died cat's meat. Writing paper in Stanta. If Madeline's with us to be wrong, we must catch the five o'clock post. Oh. Dear, dearest, my, my dearest, my dearest. to entertain us all with some songs at the piano. Decent of you, doing your normal stint as well as pandering to Gussie's every whim. Oh, Mr. Finknottle's whims are few and far between, sir. <sighs> well, are we surprised, Jeeves? Shut away in Lincolnshire, surrounded by newts and with nothing to fortify the spirit but orange juice and nothing to look at but the Boston stump, surely even the strongest whim would wither on the vine. A lesson to us all, sir. Was the musical entertainment a success, sir? From our point of view, Jeeves, a blinder. Gussie will shortly be banished to his room, a broken and rejected man. Do you get the wind up when the organ plays? How do you feel when the path done the deal? Ever so goofy, 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 goofy. Isn't he marvelous? He's just like Jack Buchanan. He is like Jack Buchanan. Yes. Jack Buchanan? Gertrude says he's like Jack Buchanan, Charlotte. Oh, is he? Singing was bad enough before, but the 
added magic ingredient of stage fright. It's an absolute calamity, Bertie. I know, I heard it. No, you don't understand. They loved it. What? Well, you've heard about people being lionized. I often wondered what it looked like, and now I know. Gussie, but he was making the most frightful row. Well, the whole grisly crew seemed to think it was wonderful. And Gertrude's all over him, too. Well, that's it. Yes, we're finished. She loves his golf, she loves his singing. He's got a telegram, too. We'll be sending telegrams to Gussie. Well, go on. Go on what? Open it. I can't catch it. It's addressed to Gussie. Well, it's probably for you. Go on. No, Catsbeat. The code of the Worcesters restrains me. Well, wouldn't restrain me. No, well, the code of the Worcesters is more rigid than the code of the Catsbeats. A Worcester cannot open a telegram addressed to another. <clears throat> Pardon me for intervening, sir, but perhaps it would alleviate the ethical pressure you find yourself under if I were to open the communication and read it out loud. Sterling notion, Jeeves. It's from Miss Bassett, sir. Uh, letter received. Cannot understand why not had reassuring telegram. Sure you concealing accident terribly serious. Fever, anxiety, fear worst. Unless hear from you soon, will arrive by earliest train. Love kisses Madeline. Well, that's... I've got to talk to you. I'm sorry, Bertie, I haven't got time. There's a lovely full moon. Gertrude and I are going out for a walk. I'm just going to get a muffler. Oh, by the way, you remember pestering me yesterday to write to Madeline? Well, I've done it. I wrote to her this afternoon. <gasps> Why are you looking like a dying duck? Because I wrote to her for you yesterday. What do you mean, for me? Well, I sort of said you couldn't. You were indisposed. Oh. Something about a horse. I forget the details. A horse? You do do the most extraordinary things, Bertie. Anyway, it really doesn't matter. Because what I said in my letter was, everything was off. Off? I've broken the engagement. I've been feeling for some days now that Madeline, although a nice enough girl, just won't do. My heart belongs to Gertrude. Bye, Bertie. Housebreaking during the hours of daylight is a most serious offence, sir. I have got to intercept that letter before Madeline Bassett oh, reads it. You? you don't have to be involved, Jeeves. You just start the car and keep the engine running. Very good, sir. Madeline. Good morning, Hilda. There's no letter from Augustus again. I'm so worried, Hilda. I think I shall go down to Devil by an earlier train. If there isn't a letter, all it means is that that other fellow, Worcester, has got fed up with having Gussie dictate letters to him. He's dippy about you, isn't he? He loves me very, very dearly. It's a tragedy. 
I can't describe to you, Hilda, the look of dumb suffering in his eyes when we meet. My photograph. What? It's not on the table. It's gone. I expect Jane smashed it. She smashes everything that isn't made of sheet iron. I'll go and ask her. What's the matter, you silly ass? Pansy! Jane says she... Hilda! Oh, Hilda, what are you doing with that gun? There's a damned man behind the sofa. No. All right, you. Come out with your hands up. No, don't! Mr. Worcester, this is a most horrible crime of which you stand accused. In all my years on the bench, I've never before been called upon to preside over such a case as this. That such a desperate crime could be perpetrated in Wimbledon in broad daylight will bring a shudder to every right-thinking person. Have you anything to say in your defense before I pass sentence? Well, you I... You did it for love, Your Honor. For what? Love. I am not ashamed to say it. And who, my dear, are you? My name is Madeline Bassett. I am the unworthy object of this gentleman's adoration. He's a very lucky young man, Miss Bassett. Not so, Your Honor. I am betrothed to another. But Bertie has gone on worshipping me. <laughs> Outwardly gay and cheerful, inwardly gnawed by a ceaseless pain. Go on. I ought to have given him my photograph long ago, but I thought it would be too painful for him, Your Honor. A sad reminder of all that he had lost. No, no, be quiet. I see now that I was wrong, Bertie. You found the strain too great to bear. Yeah. You had to have it, whatever the cost. You stole into the house and took it. <laughs> You're a very fortunate young man, Mr. Worcester, to have this girl speak up for you. The case is dismissed. <laughs> oh. Now, look here, Madeline. You must be brave, Bertie. I have to go to Augustus now. He needs me, too. Someday, another girl will come into your life, and you will be happy. When we are both old and grey, we shall laugh together over all this. <laughs> laugh. But I think, with a tear behind the smile, how sad life is. You betcha. Fetch the car, Jeeves. She's going down to Devil Hall on the next train. We've got to get there before her. Very good, sir. Too, are you? I most certainly am, child. You'll pardon me saying so, sir. What is it, Jeeves? The 
needle on the speedometer indicates that we are travelling at 85 miles per the hour. Good Lord, they're all... delightful boy. To Gertrude, a very perfect genteel knight. Abstemious. There must be some mistake. Talented. Oh, no, no. Intelligent. Surely not. Oh, Gertrude, I hoped I'd find you. <gasps> Gussie, you're all right. <laughs> what the crap? Madeline! Pardon me, Madeline, would you kindly not touch Bertie in that way? He doesn't like it. Bertie? What do you mean, Bertie? It's all Bertie Worcester's fault. What is happening? Is this man not Bertie Worcester? Of course he is not Bertie Worcester. Gussie, what have you been doing? He said he was going to marry me. Madeline, I can explain! Oh, what a journey we had. We've completely gone. Claude! Claude! I Go with him. Stop crying. But if he's been not all, who's the other one? Ah, what ho devils all? <gasps> Such a fool. Oh, of course I'll marry you. Let's leave right away. Oh, right. <clears throat> Pardon me, Mr. Potter Purbright, but I wonder if I might borrow your moustache. Sorry, Miss Lodge. I uh, had to pop up to Wimbledon to see dear old Madeline. Uh, she's well, you know, very, uh, very Madeline-ish, if you know what I mean. Uh, but then, uh, obviously, Bertie! I have to get back to... Ah! <laughs> Uh, Aunt Agatha, this is a surprise. Oh. I want an explanation, Bertie. An... And I want it now. He said he was Mr. Finknottle. Oh, he is? Yes, The thing is, Aunt Agatha... Yeah. All right, Scotland Yard. I'm looking for one Bertram Wilberforce Wooster. Scotland Yard? Uh, uh, that's me. Then I am arresting you, Bertram Wilberforce Wooster, on charges relating to the possession of an illegal golf club. Will you come quietly? Brilliant. That is brilliant. Now then, less of that. Let's have no funny business. Scotland Yard. Oh, the shame of it. What a wheeze, Jeeves. I'm glad to have been of service, sir. You know, Jeeves, if someone were to come to me and ask if I'd be willing to join a society whose aim will be the suppression of arts, or who will at least see to it that they are kept on a short chain and not permitted to roam at will, scattering desolation on all sides, I'd reply, Wilbraham, if his name was Wilbraham, that is, Wilbraham put me down as a foundation member. I'm sure such a society would not be lacking for subscribers, eh? Huh? 